This video talks about the different subtypes of skeletal muscles. Now there are two types of skeletal muscles. There is the fast muscles and the slow muscles. Don't get confused with the smooth muscles because this kind of category or this kind of categorization is not seen in smooth muscles. This is only seen in fast skeletal, sorry, it's only seen in skeletal muscles. Now let's talk about in depth what are the different types of skeletal muscles. Now type 1 is the, is the red muscles or the slow twitch muscles. And type 2 are the fast twitch muscles or in other words they're also called the white muscles. Now type 1 or slow twitch muscles or red muscles have more capillaries, more myoglobin, more mitochondria and hence more oxygen carrying capacity that can sustain aerobic activity more than the fast twitch muscles. And the reason they're called the red muscles is because all these characteristics, the more mitochondria, the more capillaries, the more myoglobin, gives them the red appearance. Usually these are the kind of muscles you're going to see more in quantity in marathon runners because they have to, they have to um, go on for a longer amount of time, they have to sustain themselves and they have to produce aerobic uh, energy and that's why they are going to have more red muscles. Where the fast twitch muscles, these are the muscles which are white in color, they have more contractile speed, um, they have less mitochondria because they need less aerobic energy, they need more fast energy, more anaerobic metabolism, um, they have less myoglobin than the red muscles, giving them a more white color which gives them the name white muscles or white fast twitch muscles. These are the muscles you're going to see more often in athletes such as weightlifters or bodybuilders. These are because they do a lot of weight and they need a lot of um, a lot of fast muscles to kind of take in that much weight in a short amount of time. You also see these kind of muscles with sprinters who are going to have short sprints, for example, those who sprint for 50 meters rather than running a marathon, you're going to see more of these white muscles in those kind of people. Now let's take a quick look at a graph that you can expect to see in a step exam. So imagine our x-axis is velocity and our y-axis is load. In fact, these are called the velocity load graph and you have something which looks like this. That's a one line coming from here to here and the other line coming from here to here. Okay, so it's obvious from this graph that they have different velocities. Let's say this one has velocity which is ending here. Let's say this is one and this one has velocity ending about here, let's say this is 1.5. Obviously these are made up values. I'm just trying to make um, a correlation here. So as you can see from this particular graph, it's obvious to you, or it's obvious to anyone, is that this particular line, or the blue line, is the one with, which, has, which has less velocity. These are the muscles that has the ability to contract at a less speed where the purple line has the ability to contract at a higher speed and let's say the blue line, let's say this line A even has the ability, less ability to, to take less load where the fast twitch, sorry, the purple line is the one which has the ability to take more load. So let's say this is 1, that's 2. These are just made up values by the way. So it's obvious from these two lines or from this graph is that our A is going to be our slow twitch muscle where B is going to be our fast twitch muscle. 
So from this velo velocity and load graph, we get that A is going to be our slow twitch with less velocity, less load. B is going to be fast twitch or the white muscles with higher velocity and higher load. Now that we understand the concept between fast and slow twitch muscle, let's take a quick example of, of something which can relate to a question um, relating the, the slow twitch and the fast twitch muscle. And the question says that a 24-year-old man lifts weight weights at a gym. He begins with 20 kg as a warm-up and then gradually increases the weight. Which of the following is the most likely result of increasing the weight? Now, first of all, even before we uh, think about what kind of muscle this is, first of all, this is obviously skeletal muscles, and we're thinking fast or slow. This is a weightlifter. This is a giveaway in terms of what is it going to be a slow twitch or fast twitch. Obviously, this is going to be fast twitch white muscles. Now, it goes on a little limb, though. It goes a little more, saying that this... This particular weightlifter starts with 20 kg and then he gradually makes increases the weight. Now which of the following statements is true? So let's quickly scan the options and see what kind of answers we have. So when we quickly scan the act, uh, answers, we see that they're talking about frequency, velocity, decreased frequency, decreased velocity, increased frequency, increased velocity. You know, these are the techniques you're going to pick up as you're going to do more and more questions to kind of quickly get to the right answer and see if that's the one you are thinking about. And the last one has an involvement of fewer motor neurons. So we know that this person is a weightlifter. We know that as this person is lift, weight, uh, lifting weights, he's using his fast twitch muscles, the white muscles. Now the velocity like we mentioned in the other um, other graph where the velocity for fast twitch muscles pretty much stays constant so increasing more weight is not going to really increase the velocity of the muscle it's not going to decrease the velocity of the muscle because the velocity of that particular type of muscle is pretty constant uh, dip, um, despite of what kind of weight you're putting on that muscle Obviously, there's an optimum weight or optimum capacity of the muscle to function, but in general, the, the, the velocity of the muscles uh, pretty much stays constant. So in that way, we can rule out um, anything that has to do with velocity. So increased velocity of motor nerve action potential, no, it stays constant. So D is out. So this is not right. And decreased velocity of motor nerve action potential, again, that one is also out because we are not really um, increasing or decreasing the velocity. Now let's talk about frequency. Now as we're putting more and more weight on the same muscle, there's going to be more and more cross bridging happening between the actin and the myosin. So since there is more cross bridging, there's going to be more uh, action potential that is going to be generated to to get the maximum or the optimal uh, or the maximum amount of energy that the person can push on with his muscles so when we think about that increased frequency of motor action potential this one is going to be the correct one and when this one is correct decreased frequency of motor action potential that is also going to be out because that is exactly the opposite of what we are talking about now what about E, involvement of fewer motor neurons? Well, there, this is absolutely wrong because the involvement of the motor neurons is obviously going to increase with more and more weight being put on um, as, the, as the weightlifter is doing more and more exercise. So in this case, the answer is going to be C uh, for fast twitch muscles. As we're putting on more weight, it's going to increase the frequency of motor nerve action potential.